Hello everyone, my name's TJ, and I'm building a game in Unity where you run a medieval tavern with your friends. In order to make the customers feel more immersive and interactive, I decided to learn Unity's animation rigging package. This allows us to modify the characters' bodies to interact with things around them, whether it be looking at someone talking or correctly holding a mug. I also spent some time adding baked lighting to my scene, but there is a whole list of things that I want to accomplish today, so without stalling anymore, let's just get into it. So to begin, I started with a very simple example of using animation rigging. Animation rigging allows me to deform the head and the neck bones of the character to look at the target instead of just staring forward in the way that the idle animation normally would. I then added a little logic to make the target match where the player is if the player is within 5 meters of the customer. Animation rigging can be applied to any bone in the character's body, so I also applied it to the hands. Our character doesn't carry the mug perfectly straight up in his standard carrying animation, so after tweaking the values a little bit, by turning animation rigging on, I can get that mug perfectly straight. Next, I wanted to redo the pathing of customers to use Unity's nav mesh agents. The previous system involved the customers going from node to node, and I had to set it up for each specific seat, and it's a very sloppy, over-engineered mess, so using nav mesh agents is a much cleaner way to make the customers path fine to their seats. Here it is in action. Jesus. Okay, so here it actually is in action. You can see the customers walk around the table to get to their seated spots. If you want to see how the nav mesh is set up, uh, I use the obstacles to carve out a spot for the table, which tells them not to walk on the table until they get close enough to their seat. After that, I played a sitting animation for each customer. And after spending a little bit of time tweaking the position values along with their rotation, they're all sitting pretty nicely in their seats. After that, I combined our previous animation rigging tests that would allow the customer's heads to follow a target and set a specific target at the table. This target bounces back and forth at the table between randomly selected nodes that all the customers will focus on. This gives a neat effect that makes it look like the customers are all having a conversation between themselves. After that, I wanted to add a drinking animation, which at first looked a little off, but after tweaking the values a little bit, uh, it's not perfect, but it's good enough for now. I then added this as a bit of an idle animation for when they're sitting at the table. But instead of this randomly playing on all of them, I only want it to be playing on the ones that are not speaking. I want there to be a different set of animations for the one that's speaking and the ones that are being spoken to. Uh, or as X more eloquently puts it. In the dialogue, there is the recipient and the, the dialogator. Great, so now that that's all cleared up, we now have our recipient and our dialogator. The dialogator is... <laughs> yeah. I can't even do this bit. But now the recipients have a handful of animations that they can show, such as uh, nodding their heads or just drinking. You can also see that I went from the previous number of eight different nodes down to only four, and I offset them so that it looks like they're speaking to the rest of the table. I also used animation rigging to fix their left hand and now make sure it's above the surface of the table. And finally, here you can see it working in the tavern. Uh, I'll just let a short little demo of it play. They will play their animations depending on whether they are speaking or being spoken to. I will switch back and forth. They won't start their animations uh, until their last one has finished and it just cycles through a random list that I put together. I'm pretty happy with it so far and I think this is where we're gonna leave it for now. So next thing we're gonna do is jump into working on some of the lighting for our tavern scene. Now, there's two different types of lighting in Unity. There's baked and real-time. Real-time lighting performs the lighting calculations at runtime every single frame. This is useful for lighting and casting shadows on characters or any sort of movable geometry, but there's a downside in which it's very heavy on your GPU, especially in very complex scenes. So the alternative is to have Unity use baked lighting, which bakes the lighting in the editor and then saves the results to the disk. So then at runtime, Unity will then load the baked light data as a texture. And now because all of these calculations are performed in advance, this will reduce the cost of drawing all the lighting data at runtime. Now the downside to baked lighting is that the objects cannot be moved once the lighting data is baked. However, for any sort of scenery such as uh, walls, this isn't an issue. So here's an example of before and after I added lighting to the tavern. You can even see a little light leaking out from the fireplace. Uh, I, I think it's a 
obviously a massive improvement and it makes the setting feel much more uh, taverny. And what's cool is that it's not an either or or we can actually use both. So what I'm going to do in the tavern is use bake lighting for all the scenery and then real time so the characters will cast shadows. So here's how it looks in game mode. Oh yeah, so let me explain the line. I added a line for the customers to queue into. I also added a new patience meter that you can see floating above their heads there. This meter will tick down over time, and if it reaches zero without the customer being served, he'll leave. There's also an exclamation point above them, indicating that you've not yet taken their order. I also added a slight outline effect to them and cleaned up their order canvas a little bit. It now disappears a few seconds after being called on. You can always call on them again to bring it back up. I've also made a change that allows three separate customers to be up at the bar to kind of mimic the feeling of a real bar a little more than just a single person being waited on. But because of this, I'm going to have to redo the mechanic of placing down the order. So I rewrote the code to give it directly to them. So you're now able to directly interact with the customer and gently place down their order in front of them. Next, I wanted to add some variety to the idle animation so the customers don't all look like clones standing next to each other. To do this, I set up some uh, variables and blend trees in the animator. Now the character style variable is randomly selected on the customer generation. Depending on the number selected for their customer style, they will display different idle animations. I also added a uh, unique idle for female animations. I then added a bunch of animations that can be randomly selected to play while waiting in line, similar to the way that we set that up for random idles at the table. So here's a few examples of how that actually looks in game. And to finish this off, there's a few last things I wanted to accomplish. Uh, I added the table functionality to the little side tables in the tavern so customers can seat themselves there as well. I also put a timer on the customers so that once they finish their meal, they'll get up and leave, opening up the seat for the next one. And that about does it for a customer overhaul so far. It's not a whole lot I still want to add. Uh, maybe eventually I'll set up uh, some functionality so that you have regulars that show up every night but uh, you know there's so many other systems that I need to work on in the game right now that anything past this point feels like unnecessary polish. Although it was fun to try to focus on one core component uh, I think the next devlog will be a little more well-rounded where I try to accomplish a uh, bunch of little systems. Again if you've enjoyed any part of this video a like would be super impactful. I am just starting out here so likes and subs make a pretty big difference. I do want to say thank you though to everyone that has joined so far. If you've got cool ideas about the game or I just want to discuss games in general, link to the Discord is down below. You can come by and hang out. But anyways, thank you again for watching. Have a great day. I'll see you in the next one.